Director of Citizen Action of Wisconsin. We're here on the uh, first day of Joint Finance Committee because uh, this is the beginning of the whole public part of the budget process to determine what the next state budget is. And it's also, we're hoping, it'll mark a, uh, the first day that we, that we actually start to have real progress on health care again in Wisconsin. Uh, we all know that we uh, finally, because of the, of the court decision, were able to pull out of the Texas lawsuit that was going to take health care away from over 20 million people nationally by throwing out the whole Affordable Care Act. Now the, uh, the biggest unfinished business in Wisconsin is to take the uh, federal Medicaid expansion money to expand Badger Care that the state has been turning down uh, for the last six years. Uh, Wisconsin specifically is the only state in the Great Lakes region not to take the extra money. And so we're needlessly leaving money on the table that could expand health care and provide more affordable health care uh, to an estimated 83,000 people in Wisconsin. And so these are hardworking people, people who, if they had Badger Care, would be far better off. They're people, most of whom work, who work in low-income professions, often work full-time, two jobs, but they're in professions like home care, child care, retail, agriculture, other professions where you don't get, you don't get insurance at work at all, or you don't get affordable insurance at work. And so this would make a huge difference and be a huge step towards eventually guaranteeing that everyone in Wisconsin has affordable health care no matter what. And so what's going to happen today and is already starting to happen today is uh, members of the Legislative Joint Finance Committee are going to hear from citizens talking about how important it is to expand Badger Care. And because really the top election issue by far by all of the uh, post-election research was health care. And the biggest thing we can do right now, in fact, I think the biggest advance we can get in health care and, uh, and in equity is to take in this budget most likely is to expand Badger Care by taking that Medicaid money you've been leaving on the table so long. So with that, I want to turn it over. We are very fortunate to have some great speakers and local representatives here from the Janesville area, where the uh, joint fi first Joint Finance Committee public hearing is taking place. And so we're fortunate to have uh, Senator Janice Ringhand, who represents the area, uh, to, talk about, uh, to talk about why it's so important to expand Badger Care. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Robert. Well, first of all, thank you all for being here today. This is a very important day for our area, and it's good to hear the thoughts of all the people from my district. I do represent the Janesville area, the 15th Senate District, so I'm very happy to be here and join you today. And Robert's already touched on a lot of major areas that uh, Governor Evers' budget needs to accept this expansion money so that we can do what he's put into his budget. It's incumbent upon that. 37 other states have accepted the Medicare expansion already, including every state surrounding Wisconsin. This is not a partisan issue. It's not Democratic or Republican. And we just need to adopt the expansion because it greatly benefits all of our citizens. Allowing people who make up to $17,000 per year to have access to Medicare would provide affordable health care for about 83,000 people in our state. That's a lot of people when you stop and think about it. And as was mentioned earlier today by the superintendent of schools in Janesville, our poverty rate has increased drastically in this area. And it makes it really difficult for people to get the health care they need, especially children. When you're sick, you don't learn. Your whole family becomes dysfunctional. And Governor Evers' budget would spend all of that $324 million in savings for, for health care needs within our communities. Investing in, the lever in, excuse me, investing in the savings also leverages an additional $1.6 billion in new federal funding to make historic investments in health and well-being for everyone in Wisconsin. $43 million of that would go towards childhood lead poisoning. Rock County has been identified as one of the counties in the state that is leading in lead poisoning, mainly because of paint, but also because of water. $48 million would go to improve dental access. Then this substantially increases the reimbursement rates to health care providers and personal care and other long-term care providers, who we also know are in very short supply in this area because of the extremely low wages that they have. And we'd also work with putting $3.3 million towards tobacco cessation. And I know I had already talked to some folks here who are going to advocate for including the jewel or the fake artificial tobacco in that number. 
And we would uh, like to extend Medicare eligibility to women for up to one year after they've had a baby to ensure that mother and baby both stay healthy and expand dementia care specialists by making Medicaid services available to all Medicaid enrollees with dementia. That's a lot of medical expansion, but we could really, really use it in this county. 62% of the citizens in Rock County voted yes on a referendum in 2014 to expand our Medicare aids. And so I think it's time that we move forward and actually do that. So we're hoping that that will be a reality. Thank you. Now we have Representative Mark Spritzer, who represents a big hunk of Rock County as well. So, Representative, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. Uh, thank you for including me in this. I'm State Representative Mark Spritzer. I represent the Beloit and the western part of Rock County and the eastern part of Greene County, very close to here. And we're here at the uh, first of the 2019 Joint Finance Committee budget public hearings, listening to people about their support for Governor Evers' people's budget. It's a budget that came from the people of Wisconsin, and the proposals in it are trying to really put politics before people to solve problems that have plagued our state for years. And one of those things that I've heard over and over again from people in my district is the issue of health care coverage. And for years, partisan politics has presented, prevented Wisconsin from doing the right thing. And now Governor Evers' budget is putting a priority on people and their care, standing up to the special interests that would rather waste our money that we've already paid to the federal government than care for our friends, neighbors, and families. Taking the federal funds to expand Badger Care will save Wisconsin taxpayers money, it will cover more people, and it will help improve the quality of life for people across our state. Uh, Senator Ringham talked about the things that we can do with the savings that this creates, but it also directly helps people with their health insurance for those 82,000 who would newly qualify. These are families who are working their way out of poverty, who are making just enough to be above the federal definition of poverty, but not much more. And they should not have to worry that earning a little bit more money means they will lose their health insurance. We shouldn't be penalizing people for working to improve their lives and the lives of their children. And we shouldn't make them be afraid that they're going to lose everything that they've worked so hard for because they make just a tiny bit more money. By taking the expansion, we will get back federal tax dollars that Wisconsin residents have already paid, and we'll use them to provide health insurance to 82,000 more Wisconsin residents who work and make just enough to be legally above poverty. Taking these funds will allow us to ensure that families on the rise are not pushed back down by government that's supposed to be helping them get to their feet. Here in Rock County, we're ready for this. We've been supporting it for years. As Senator Ringhan mentioned, the people have spoken time and time again, supporting this exact proposal overwhelmingly at referendum, and also electing representatives who have made this issue a key part of our platforms. As I travel my district, I hear from people of all walks of life about the struggle to afford quality health care. It's my job to help resolve that issue as best we can. So I'm excited that we have a new governor who's listening to the people and willing to put them first by fighting for this Badger Care expansion in the state budget. It's what our state wants. It's what our state needs. So let's pass the Badger Care expansion and let's pass this budget. Let's put people first and get them the care that they need. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. I want to acknowledge that uh, our very close allies in expanding Badger Care, uh, Kids Forward is here, John Peacock on behalf of Kids Forward. So thank you for joining us and all the work you're doing on this. And uh, I mean, this really is where the rubber meets the road. So medical professionals know that having access to health care is a life and death issue and affects the quality of life and your freedom to live an independent, fulfilling life. And we have heard from around the state stories of uh, home care workers, there's actually a shortage of caregivers who turn down extra hours to stay in poverty so that they can keep their badger care. And this would uh, greatly reduce the need to do that. Just imagine that. So people going out without caregivers because the caregiver is try deliberately staying in poverty just to, in order to keep their health care. And so we have Dr. Uh, Mike Cummins with us, a family physician who's gonna talk about the importance of everyone having medical care and of expanding Badger Care. So Mike, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I've known Badger Care in several ways. I'm a family practice doctor and I worked as a solo family practice doctor for 20 years. During that time, I treated thousands of patients with Badger Care as their insurance. For many years, my wife could not get private insurance due to a pre-existing condition, asthma, for which she had never been hospitalized. For a number of years, she was insured by Wisconsin High Risk Pool, HRSP. We still remember the high cost of, cost of HRSP and the limits on coverage. 
Finally, I was insured in the ACA marketplace for several years. For the last 10 years, I've worked with uh, healthcare quality improvement, and I currently work for an insurance company that provides medical care to uh, members of Badger Care and Medicare in Wisconsin. When I was in practice, I saw patients with Badger Care. It paid less than employer-based private insurance, but it paid. I also saw, also saw patients with no insurance who could not afford to pay me. They needed health care, so I treated them. I didn't get, expect to get paid. This loss was partially offset by increasing costs to other patients and insurance that could pay. Many of these people are the people who would be covered by Badger Care expansion today. Were I still in practice, I would totally support Badger Care expansion since it would reduce the number of patients I'm giving uncompensated care to. This would in turn, in turn decrease my need to increase fees for those who have insurance or who could afford to pay out of pocket. This also works on a larger scale. Several studies have shown that accepting Medicaid expansion has lowered losses from uncompensated care by about 40% among health care providers in Medicaid expansion states. Other studies have shown that this then results in an 11% reduction in marketplace insurance premiums in Medicaid expansion states. We the citizens, patients, medical experts, and members of Citizens Action of Wisconsin urge the legislature to expand Badger Care as soon as possible. You may say accepting Badger Care expansion will raise insurance premiums. This medical provider tells you you are wrong. Thank you very much, Dr. Cummins. Very good. And let me just close out. Thank everyone here. You see all the public support here, here to testify today and, uh, and the great support from lawmakers. Uh, just to be clear on this, uh, there is no good public policy reason to turn down this money. Okay, there's just none. It's costing us more to cover fewer people and to make health care more expensive for the people who need it most. People who are uh, try working, working people trying to move up the economic ladder and the jobs that don't provide good benefits, right? A lot of the jobs that are unfortunately more and more available in this economy to people as they're, as they're trying to work the way up the economic ladder and, and make the American dream. And so we, were, we saw some disappointing arguments in the first day of joint finance on Wednesday from some of the members of this committee. Uh, I Just reading old talking points, I think this is going to change as they actually hear from the public. And that's why the real heroes here are all the people behind me, other people in the audience behind us in this big auditorium that are going to now weigh in and tell this legislature and tell all of the lawmakers, not just the folks who are with us here, exactly what is in the public interest and what they ought to do as their elected representatives. So with that, I want to thank you, and we're all going to go back in and keep watching this hearing. So thank you. <laughs>